Hello and welcome to Python Fundamentals. In this course, we learn the underpinning Python programming skills, preparing for our journey towards mastering the Django framework and the Python programming language. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials. You can find the link to the whole playlist in the video description. This tutorial is from our Python Programming Fundamentals for Django Developers course, which you can find and purchase on Udemy. You will find all the latest and updated tutorials, as well as resources and assessments to help accelerate your learning of the subject. The link to the course, which will always provide the best price, can be found in the video description. Assuming that you have watched the previous tutorials in this section of the course, we now have the basic underlining, underpinning principles of utilizing and working with a function. Whether you decide to choose an object oriented programming approach or a function based approach to building Django applications, functions are probably going to be something that you can't move away from and you'll need to have a basic understanding of using. So let's take a look at the underpinning knowledge of a function base view here in Django. Although we have already built our view and maybe have a general understanding of the purpose of our view, a view function described by Django, or a view for short, is a Python function, which we now know, that takes a web request and returns a web response. So that's really the important bit of developing a view in Django is that we need to understand the fact that our function takes a web request and returns a web response. So let's go back in our code. I'll close this example here. Let's go into our views that we generated previously on this course. I'll drop this down. So that's the important part, like I suggested in the slide there, that our view, when we build a view, it must take in a HTTP request. So you can see that the first parameter or well, this parameter is always going to be defined when we build views using functions. So the question is, well, what would happen if we didn't have the request? So I remove that. You can see that the server is already running. So I'm going to start the server and then go over to the page here. So that's the page slash add new slash. That's the page we created earlier in the course. So I press enter here and you can see here that we're told that add new takes zero positional arguments. Remember we pass arguments into our function and in our function we define the parameters. So you can see here that we weren't given, we didn't take any positional arguments, but one was given. So we tried to give our function one argument, but you can see here that we don't actually have any defined in our function. So that means we need to go back here and create this parameter here which needs to be called request. So if we try something else, let's just spell it wrong and go back. You can see here that we're now told that the name request is not defined. So we do need to call it request. So when we build functions here in Django, uh, in our views, we need to make sure that it takes in the request. Now, let me go back a sec. When we're building views that's connected to URLs, we do need to pass in request. But of course we can build our own functions here, new function. So let's go for the calculation function. Let's bring this in, calculation. So let's pass in A and B, set those two parameters, and let's go ahead and return A plus B. Okay, so we give that a go. Oh, okay, let's be a little bit more explicit. So A plus B, and then we pass back X. There we go. Okay, so we can bring in and utilize our own functions here and we can call them within other functions. So let's imagine, for example, we wanted to, uh, let's go, yeah, let's go ahead and now add this into our, uh, our template here. So let's go ahead and bring in our function. Remember, we need to call our function as calculation. We need to pass in A and B. So we need two arguments there. So let's go for 10 and five. Okay, so we call our function here. Let's go ahead and give this a, a name. Let's turn it into a variable, sorry. So we're gonna store the, the return value in X and let's pass it to our 
template. So at the moment, we've defined the form set as returning. So I'm going to use a comma at the end here. And now I'm going to define um, my data, my calculation data. So the calculation is going to be X. So I'm going to pass this now and make it available to my template. So let's go into my templates, add new. And I'm just going to output it somewhere, just maybe above the form here. So we need the doubles, curly braces, and then reference the key calc. And that's obviously going to hold the value. So let's give that a go now, see if that makes any difference. And you can see here we have the value right here. So it's mandatory for us to define the request when we create a new view function. Now, secondly, then it returns a web response. So Django is expecting our view to build a web response. So Django provides us the tools to actually return a response, a return, which is considered by Django a web response. So it's formatted in a way that can be then converted or presented to the user in their browser. So back in the code here then, we have this shortcut here, render. We bring in this render. So render is a function which behind the scenes in actual fact is building a HTTP response. So let's just go ahead and build a new function to begin with. So we're going to build a new URL. So let's just go through the process again. So let's just call this test for now. Okay, so that's the test. And then we're going to connect this to a new view. And we're just going to call this view test. There we go. Right, so let's go back into our views. Let's build a new view. So we're going to create a new view called test. Now I'm not going to pass in anything just yet. And then we're going to return our HTTP response. Now let's remember we are building a, a Django view. So we have connected it up, but we are going to need to pass in request. So we are going to need to return a HTTP response. So the HTTP response is a function. So we're bringing these tools in from the Django toolkit. So it's a function. So we're going to need the parentheses here. And we're going to need to pass something in. So what we can do is we can build some HTML code and maybe pass that HTML code back. So HTML code equals, and then let's just go for HTML. Let's build some tags, a body, and the body tag. So we're just building a web page here, essentially, HTML. Let's um, add some text. Text will go into the middle here. Hello world. There we go. So let's just go ahead and add that into the response. So that's the HTTP response. So Django is going to utilize within this function, it's going to generate a, an appropriate response format, which can be then sent back to the user. So let's go back into our web page here. Let's go to our test now. And you can see that that isn't working. So you can see here we've got an error because mm, views dot test looks like in line seven. Apparently we've got an error here. Um, so add a comma to the end there. Okay, right. Let's go back in. Let's refresh. You can see that something strange is happening here. So let's get rid of that. Let's add a slash, and there we go. So you can see here that I'm returning this hello world. So that's really the, the basic type of view that we can generate. You can see it's a function. We need to take in a request. We don't necessarily have to do anything with it, but it, behind the scenes that's required. And then we then go ahead and return this HTTP response. Now notice here in our other views that we've made, we've been utilizing the render function. Now this render function includes a HTTP response, but this render function is responsible for wrapping up all of these other aspects, including, for example, creating and rendering the template and preparing that already before then returning a HTTP response. So this function, if we looked under the hood and actually looked at the code, it does end up returning a HTTP response but it does all these other aspects for us. For example, here we pass in the template. So 
That's obviously what we're going to return to the user. In addition to returning a HTML template, Django may also return an error, an image, or other data that you want sent back to the user. So to recap, a Django view is essentially just a function, but it takes in one argument. So we need to define one parameter called request, and we need to return a HTTP response. So Django provides us the HTTP response tool, whether we build a simple HTTP response and use HTTP response function, or whether we use the render function, so allowing us to render a template and return that template code, or many other methods, you can see that the general dynamics, taking a request, we return a HTTP response. So we have previously mentioned on a few occasions, and we have now seen that we need to connect a, a view to a URL. So behind the scenes, going back to the code, the first step we saw was for us to build a new URL. Now these URLs are slightly different because we're importing them in to our project in a slightly different way, but I'm making the assumption that you remember that we created the core and then there was a URL file there. And you can see here that we've imported the, the URLs from our new app. If you remember in the previous tutorials, we went through that process. So what we did in the previous tutorial, we created a new URL. We gave it an endpoint, which was test slash. Remember that has to be unique. We can't have two endpoints points at the same because that's pointed to our views. So we import our views and then connect it to our view, which we've, we've seen here, our simple view with a HTTP response. 